Do you know the three different levels of vocabulary that we need to teach our students in school and, and at home? Let's go through and have a look. So there's three tiers of vocabulary. This is taken from the work of Beck, McCowan and Kukin, and they have a great book um, on how we can teach students vocabulary in a robust way. So the tier one words are down at the bottom. They're words that are commonly used when we're speaking. Kids pick these up on a daily basis just by talking to friends, talking to other adults and then the books that they read at a very simple level. The next level words are high frequency words and they're found across all sorts of different subjects. And the tier three words are those really specific words that are to do with a specific um, subject area. So photosynthesis or um, in terms of horse riding it might be about talking about diagonals or about counter changes. So lots of very specific words that would be in that tier three. For my experience, the tier two words are the ones we need to be really careful of. We sort of assume that children pick these up through conversations in school and the books that they read and the text we provide. But often I find that these are the ones that students get. We assume they've got and they haven't got a good understanding. For example, the word there is concentrate. Um, that has multiple meanings depending on the context. So that could be confusing and children need to know that. So. Um, there are three instructional principles we need to make sure we're thinking about when teaching vocab. We need to define the word and give some contextual knowledge of that word. We need to give children the opportunity to engage with the word, to say the word, to practice the word, to put it in sentences, to talk to their friends using it in sentences. And then we need to do that again in multiple exposures over multiple days, over weeks in both spoken and written language to make sure it's really those words are really put into their long term memory. So here's one way you can teach a student a word. So I've used the word here, concentrate, I've put it in the middle and I've found a definition for it. Then I think about what are the synonyms, words that are similar, and then also the antonyms, words that would be the opposite really of concentrate. So if you're distracted, you're unfocused, then you're not concentrating. Um, and I've given an example of that word in a sentence, had to concentrate to do my maths homework. However, there are other meanings. We could concentrate people together. We could concentrate a liquid. How many children know when they look at the back of a juice bottle, whether it's when it says it's made from concentrate, what does that actually mean? Because um, if you actually try and make it out of thinking really hard, that's not going to work in this context. So students need to think about other meanings of the words. And this is where going to a dictionary and looking at words is really useful. Another way I like is to just look at the word, think about what it is, what the category is, what the features are of that and then give some examples. So for here we've got in the cyclone, which is the category would be a natural disaster. And what is it like? Well, it's not much fun, it's windy, it's rainy, it causes a lot of damage. And then I put some sentences there that would help explain that further. This one I really like for students who have multiple difficulties. So for students who have literacy difficulties across the board, so they may be students who have a dyslexia as well as are learning new words. So that means you can tie in some of the skills that they need to support their literacy learning skills, but also with their vocabulary. So here's the word carnival, and we've got a definition of that. We also think about what word class that belongs to. Might not sound so important, but just to keep dropping those in helps to build that as we go. Then we look about how we split this word into syllables. Um, you may or may not agree with the way I've done that, but the way I do it is always do vowel consonant chop, and that works for so many words we can work around the other few. Then I code the word. So I put the A and the R together because they're saying the sound R, and I put the O and the R and the E together because they're making the sound OR together on the end of car near OR. Um, and then I like to look at the morphemes in the word, the prefixes, the base words, the suffixes. What do those bits mean? So we've got here carne, which means flesh or meat, and vor means eating. So if we put those together, we're also going to get something that eats meat. And then I get the students to give me some examples, um, a, a, re, a true example, maybe in the second one they've given actually a non-example. Then again, I've gone back to synonyms and antonyms. So just to give students a little bit of um, phonemic awareness and word building within teaching um, vocabulary. Another one you can do in English, we have so many words that have shape, what we call shades of meaning. And some of that's to do with where they have come from in terms of the English language being a, a meld of many other languages that have come together. So you can put those words on a number, on a line on the floor, which one is less, which one is more. Do you agree? Some people might disagree with the way I've ordered mine. And if you can argue the case, then that's absolutely fine. 
So I hope that's given you some ideas on how to teach vocabulary and some examples of things you can try with your students. And if you'd like for, for more ideas, uh, visit my website.